All right, so January 2020, question number four. This says um, the function f is defined as f of x is equal to 2x plus 7 over 5. I is asking us to find the value of f of 4 plus f of minus 4. All right, so for f of 4 in f, wherever I see x, I'm going to put 4. So this is 2 times 4 plus 7 over 5 and then um, plus f of um, minus 4 in f, wherever I see x, I'm going to put minus 4. So this is 2 times minus 4 plus 7 and still over 5. Up top, we have um, 2 4 is 8 plus 7 is 15 over 5. Plus to the right, we have what? Um, 2 times 4 is um, 2 times 4 is 2 times minus 4 is minus 8 plus 1. So this is minus 1 over 5. So this is 15 over 5. Now plus minus 1 over 5 is the same as saying minus 1 over 5. The final answer here is 14 over 5. So if I'm adding or subtracting two fractions and the denominators are the same, I simply add or subtract the numerator and keep the denominator. So that's A. All right, um, B, remember f of x is equal to 2x plus 7 over 5. Um, here we're asked to calculate the value of x, which f of x is equal to 9. So we have f of x is equal to 9. f of x is 2x plus 7 over 5 is equal to 9 over 1. So we need to solve this equation. If I have one fraction is equal to one fraction, um, if I have one fraction is equal to one fraction, to get rid of the fraction, I would cross multiply. One times two x plus seven is two x plus seven. Five times nine is 45. Now two x would be equal to 45 minus seven, 2x would be equal to, this looks like 38. All right, then divide both sides by two. And when I do that, I'm gonna get that x is equal to 19. So x is equal to 19 is the value of x that cause f of x to be equal to nine. Now, hence or otherwise, um, determine the value of f inverse of 9. All right, hence or otherwise. Now, <clears throat> this is only for one mark. So therefore, the otherwise don't make any sense. The otherwise would be a very lengthy process. So we have to use the hence. Now, what I'm going to use is this principle that f inverse of 9 is the solution of the equation f of x is equal to 9. So in other words, if I want to get the value of f inverse of 9, I must solve the equation. One way to go about it is to solve the equation f of x is equal to 9. But we just did. We just solved the equation f of x is equal to 9, and we got 19. This means, therefore, that f inverse of 9 is equal to 19. All right, so this here is something that you should know by now. All right, that is a, something that a very fundamental principle in um, 
very fundamental principle in um, in um, relations and function. Moving on. All right, so the next part of the question looks like coordinate geometry. B says the graph below shows two lines, um, L1 and L2. L1 intersects the X axis and Y axis, the X and Y axes at four zero and um, zero two respectively. L2 intersects the Y axis at um, 1.50 and the X axis at zero minus, five, minus three respectively. We're asked to determine the equation of the line L1. Now, to determine the equation of a straight line, there are two things you need. You need a gradient and you need the y-intercept. So let's determine the gradient. Um, we know two points. We know two clear points on line one. Any two points will do, but we can just use the two points that they gave us. So for line one, Let's use the points um, 2, 0, which is the y-intercept, and 4, 0, which is the x-intercept. We could call this x1, y1, and call this x2, y2. M, the gradient, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is equal to zero. All right, so I made an error. Slight error, don't worry about it. I can fix it quickly. The y-intercept is actually zero two. All right, so um, y2 is zero minus y1, which is two over x2, four minus x1, which is zero. This is minus two over four. Four, the gradient here is minus a half. Stay with me. Now, the y-intercept C is two. That I simply got from inspection. Look at the line. You can see that line one cuts the y-axis at two. That's the y-intercept. y-intercept is two, so I don't need a special calculation for it. The y-intercept is two. So y is equal to mx plus c. Remember, a straight line is defined by the gradient and the y-intercept. Once you know the gradient and the y-intercept, you know the equation of the line. So y is equal to the gradient, which is minus a half, x plus c, the y-intercept, which is two. So the equation of line one is y is equal to minus a half x plus two. Stay with me. Next, we're asked to write, what is the gradient of the line two? given that line one and line two are perpendicular. What's the gradient of line two, given that line one and line two are perpendicular? Guys, if two lines are perpendicular and you know the gradient of one, to find the gradient of the other, you must invert the first gradient and change its sign. So M1 is equal to M1, which is the gradient of L1, is equal to minus a half. M2, which is the gradient of L2, is equal to positive two. So if I invert one over two, I'm going to get two over one. If I change the sign from negative, it's going to become positive. So the gradient of the line L2 is positive two. <laughs> 